Hey guys, in this video I plan to show you how to find the equivalent force couple of this system about point A. And what that means is, we seek to find an equivalent force you can draw at A, an equivalent moment you can draw at A, which will behave dynamically equivalent to this. Okay, so to do that, let me reiterate, you need to find the net force, and you need to find a net moment about point A. So let's do that. Let's first find the net force in the x direction. We'll notice that each of these forces just here are purely in the y and z direction, conveniently, which means that the sum of forces in your x direction is zero newtons. Now let's do the net force in your y direction. Well, this is in your negative y direction, so this will be minus 200 newtons. This is in your positive y direction, so that will be plus 300 newtons. And this is in your negative y direction, so that's going to be minus 600 newtons. And when you add that together, that's going to be 100 minus 600, which is minus 500 newtons. Okay, now let's do the sum of forces in your z direction. Well, what are your forces in your z direction? Bingo, bingo, bingo. So that's going to be minus 100 plus 400 and minus 500. What does that give? Well, it's going to be 300 minus 500, which is minus 200 newtons, which means then the equivalent force we can draw at A, the equivalent force we can draw at A is going to be in vector form 0, minus 500, and minus 200. Notice that each element in here corresponds to the force, to your net force, in your x, y, and z direction, respectively. Okay? Now let's deal with our moment. This is significantly harder. Let's find out what our sum of moments at point A around our z axis, around our x axis is. In order to do this, let's remind ourselves what the right hand rule is again. Get your right hand and put your thumb in the direction of the x axis. Now curl your fingers around your hand and you'll notice that this will be the direction they're facing. And by convention, this is assumed to be positive. So that means any torque that has a tendency to rotate this bar about this direction, so about the x-axis in this direction, will be considered positive. I know that's a lot to swallow right now, that might be a little bit clearer as I do a few examples. So you'll notice each of these forces don't produce any torques about the x-axis because they pass through the x-axis which means then the only torques of interest are going to be this 40 newton meter torque, which is negative, and this 20 newton meter torque, which is positive. So that's going to be minus 40 and plus 20, which I'm no mathematician, but that'll be minus 20 newton meters. Now let's find the net moment at point A about our y-axis. So let's see what torques and forces so, sorry, let's see what torques have a tendency to rotate this bar about our y-axis. Well, this is considered positive by our right-hand rule again, which means then we've got two candidates. We've got this one just here, this 400 Newton force, which will produce a torque about here. So this will be, let's see, it'll be negative because it, tends, because it has a tendency to rotate this bar about this side of the y-axis, which is negative by convention. So it'll be minus 400 and what do you times it by? You times it by the force by you times the force by the perpendicular distance from your force towards your axis of rotation. So in other words, you times it by this distance just here, right? Which happens to be one meter because the bar is two meters long and B bisects it. So this right here is one meter long, so you get minus four hundred times by one meter. Really make sure you're following the signs right here. It's negative because the 400 Newton force has a tendency to rotate this bar about the y-axis in the negative direction. How about this 500 Newton force? This is a tendency to rotate the bar in the positive y direction. So this will be, this will be positive 500 times by 2. So it'll be plus 500 times by our perpendicular distance from our force to our axis of rotation, which is two meters. I know I'm hammering this down quite a bit, but I really want to make sure you understand this. Okay, so that is your net moment about point, uh, at point A about your y-axis, which will be equal to 600 Newton meters. Now, finally, let's solve for the sum of moments at point A about our z-axis. 
Well, let's see. What forces here produce torques which have a tendency to rotate this thing about the z-axis? Don't forget this is considered positive. So, we've got this 300 newton torque, 300 newton force, which will have a torque of 300 times by its perpendicular distance from your force towards your axis of rotation, which is once again one meter. And this 600 newton force will produce a negative torque, because this is positive, and it's, it's, it's got a tendency to rotate this way, which is going to be minus 600, let me use the right color, it'll be minus 600 times by 2 meters, which, when you plug into your calculator, is minus 900 newton meters. And what we've essentially shown now is that our net moment at point A is going to be equal to a vector, which is minus 20, 600, minus 900 newton meters. As a brief aside, you could also use the cross product to find out what the moments are, just in case you're unfamiliar with the intuition method, right? I, I don't want to make you think this is the only way you can solve this problem. You could have also used our moment is equal to r cross f, and I'll be, sh ready, I'll be showing you how to do this using another um, video. Anyway, this is what you need to show, this, what I've written in red and what I've written in blue, is what you need to show to get full marks in, in, in your test, assuming you've drawn your axis. Now, just to build a little bit of intuition, let me actually show you this picture I drew earlier. This right here is our equivalent force couple system. These two systems will behave dynamically equivalent, right? Notice that what's written in blue just here is our net moment at point A, and this, what I've drawn in red, is our force vector, right? So I've also drawn them roughly to scale, just, just to give you an indication of what they look like. Now, as just before I end this video, I want to say, if your professor also asks you to find the magnitude of your equivalent force and of your equivalent couple, then you'd have to do this. This right here is how we write our magnitude of our force vector. We write it as the square root times by each of these terms squared. So it'll be 0 squared plus minus 500 squared plus minus 200 squared. And when you plug that into your calculator, you'll be left with 530 9 newtons. This is the length, if you like, of this vector just here. This is 539 newtons, right? So this gives you a, an indication of, of how large your force really is, okay? Now we can do the same for our moment as well, because your moment is a vector as well. Your magnitude of your moment about point A is going to be equal to the square root of minus 20 squared plus 600 squared plus minus 900 squared. And when you plug that into your calculator, you'll be left with 1,082 newton meters, right? So basically, if, if, if you look at it, this right here, this right here is 1,082 newton meters just there. That's the, that's the length, if you like, of, of this vector just here. Okay, so this is all you'd need to do to get full marks whenever you're asked to find an equivalent force couple system. This, this magnitude is often unnecessary, but it's useful to know anyway. Anyway, I hope that makes sense, guys. Leave a comment in the description if you want a little bit more clarification on something.